Hey, it's Onesto. And in this video, you're gonna hear some of my favorite ways to use Vocal Synth 2 from Isotope. Before we jump into the DAW, I wanted to give a quick disclaimer, and that's this video is not gonna be a walkthrough of Vocal Synth 2. There's a lot of great videos on YouTube about that already. So instead, I wanted this video to be giving you some simple and creative ways to use Vocal Synth 2 that will allow you to get the most out of this plugin. So with that said, here are the best ways to use Vocal Synth 2. All right, before I start rattling off a bunch of fun facts about Focal Synth 2, I wanna show you what we are gonna be cooking with today. We have an eight bar loop. I have this vocal sample that I grab off the of splice. I have a keys piano layer. And then we have our vocal synth um, set up here. But let's just hear how it sounds without any vocal synth at all. Blue is what you do. You give me yellow eyes and orange skies. Yeah, I just wanted to keep it really sweet sounding. I want to show how vocal synth can be used to add just like a really sweet and airy texture uh, to a vocal. So let me open up vocal synth. Let me show you how that looks if you haven't seen it already. Here it is. So this kind of looks like a lot. It feels overwhelming because you have all these sliders, all these sections. Uh, I felt overwhelmed at first when I looked at this thing. But after you sit through it, you realize that you can use it in as like shallow of a way as possible or it as an in-depth way as possible and it will work out. It's pretty cool that way. There's just something special and magical about vocoders in general. Oh, and I have a link uh, to buy vocal synth too uh, in the description below. It just makes it a little bit easier for you to find on the internet. Um, it links over to Plugin Boutique, which is a great place to buy <laughs> plugins. So here is my very first tip. It has nothing to do with vocal synth. It has everything to do with the sample that you use. Use vocal samples or just samples in general that are clean and dry. Um, so this is how this vocal sounds with oh, any effects on it. Ooh, it's what you do. Yes, it's super dry. And the reason why you want a dry sample um, is because all the wetness from either delay or reverb, it will uh, get a little bit unruly in vocal synth when you try working with it. Um, not to say that it can't make something really cool and interesting and beautiful, uh, however, I just like to have as much control as possible. So I like to have a dry vocal. All right, tip number two, we will actually get into vocal thin. And this is, my, this is probably the, the most important tip of this whole video, which is that MIDI mode is where it's at. But yes, MIDI mode is totally where it's at. Because let me show you what it's like in auto mode. In auto mode, um, you play this. This is how it sounds. Ooh, it's what you do. You give me that. Yeah, it's not really working out. And that's typically kind of the results I come across. Like I'm sure you can wrangle it in, but I think you get the easiest, uh, quickest, fastest, wonderful control just from mini mode. This is what you get instead. So I have in my chord progression from my, my piano keys, um, MIDI track made it much simpler. This is how it sounds. Ooh, it's what you do. You give me okay, so already it sounds like a much better vocoder. Um, and this is like the default setting. And I think a lot of it is coming from MIDI mode. You're playing these chords. Those chords are um, being run through vocal synth and you get this beautiful sound. Usually right here in this empty void, um, depending on your DAW, you will get some instructions on how to set up vocal synth inside your DAW to work with MIDI mode. Isotope doesn't think that Bitwig Studio is worthy of such instructions. Um, so that kind of sucks, but I figured out how to use it. And um, I will zoom in right here. So if you are a Bitwig user, screenshot this, and this is what you need to do. And it's um, pretty simple. Okay, here's my next tip. Um, and it's using presets, but it's not in the way that you think. So there are the, these are the presets that um, are in vocal synth. They're great. I love using the ones in MIDI mode. Um, and it just like fits really well with the MIDI mode. It's really good. But what I like to do is scroll through these presets. These presets affect all these advanced settings in here and really helps me just kind of find new ways of using this uh, plugin. It's really cool. So let's do that now. I like to start from left and go to right. Um, I don't know. I just like to do it that way. So I'm just going to hit play. It's going to be running through a loop. I just want to just make this thing from scratch. Just make a, a new preset. Here we go. Oh, 
Okay, now that I got my settings kind of dialed in, I want to now scroll through the presets. Check out this out. Great, that's sounding pretty cool already. What I want to do now is adjust the volume of things like talk box. I like how it sounds, but I don't want it to be super dominant. So I'm just bringing this volume down. And then I like the vocoder. I want to keep that in the center for loudest that is. And then file box down here. Let's hear less. Nice. The very last thing I want to do is go in this like advanced setting and I'm going to pan two of them to the uh, one to the left, one to the right, and keep one down the center. Now I like uh, vocoder the most, so the setting that I created here. So that one we'll, we'll keep in the center. But Biovox and Talkbox, we will pan. So this one will be to the left. Eh, something like that. This one will make to the right. Let's hear how this sounds. Yeah, I really like the panning because it allows this effect to, uh, to just kind of surround you. And I think that's, to me, like makes it really successful instead of it just being right down the center, right behind the vocal. Okay, so here's a really quick tip I want to share with you, which is using this gate knob. It's really easy to miss. Like, look how tiny this knob is. It's just, you know, a little knob right here. But the reason why I like it is that it allows you to just further clean up your uh, vocal signal. So I'm just going to dial this up until uh, it's kind of like at its limit. I still want to get any like noises that happened in the vocal recording. All right, it sounds pretty interesting. And you're hearing that reverb? Why do you have reverb on it? Yeah. Okay, now this is a lot cleaner. Great. Okay, the next tip is moving on to effects. Before I got better at using this plugin, I used to ignore these, these effects down here, just completely ignore them. But that was a bad idea. These, plug, these little effects in this plugin are really helpful. And I feel like they were like tailored to work really well with this plugin. And I like to use all of them except for shred. I'll use smooth shred over here. The reason why is uh, shred kind of like chops up your audio in like a rhythmic way, which here, I'll show you how it sounds. <laughs> Which can be really cool. It can be really helpful, but for most purposes, um, that's not really helpful. So let me start over to the left and work my way to the right. And we'll just add in some effects to this to make it more special, unique, and give us some more flavor. So I use it to store, just give it a little bit of a boost. For filter, I like to use um, bypass filter and just remove any lows that I don't want. Nice. All right, so transform this, uh, I feel like it just kind of um, simulates different amps. That's my educated guess of what it does. I'm pretty sure that's what it does. So I'm just gonna kind of scroll through the different options, 
pick one. I like Creek. It's been really nice. In chorus, I like to add chorus a lot. Kind of helps smooth out the vocal. Usually not at 100, I think it's a bit. Almost around 50. Today I don't feel like using delay. <laughs> That's a good delay. And then for ring mod, this uh, is kind of like an LFO modulation. Here, I'll play it. So that's what it does. And I like to kind of I like to use it. I like to have the mix super low. I like to just hide it in there to kind of have that uh, tiny bit of vibrato. Um, you may never even hear it, but I know it's there and you know it's there. Okay, so I'm going to bring it back in that, that uh, reverb. Oh, I like how that looks and sounds and let's hear what we created nice that's really cool um let's make this into a preset uh this would be a fun little game. I'm just going to call it temp for now. And I want you to help me come up with a preset name for this. So uh, drop in some preset names in the comments below. Uh, whatever I think is the best and best could be funniest, weirdest, strangest, oddest, whatever. I will name it that. And who knows, maybe if I create a whole bunch of presets, I can give them away for free. And this was all really fun. I hope it was helpful. These are seriously my favorite ways to use vocal synth too. And I think it's time for an outro. Thank you so much for watching this video. And don't forget, I need your help in naming this preset. So tell me what you want to name it in the comments below. And subscribe if you want to watch some more videos like this. And I'll see you later. Bye.